Hey everyone, it's Yvonne here. I am the marketing director over at Mayish Wholesale Florist and welcome to our February 5th Mornings with Mayish show. This is a super special show guys because I have a very special guest, Sarah Campbell, and she is here to chat about wedding sales and marketing strategies to increase your budgets and expand your portfolio. Very, very exciting stuff. So if you wanna increase your wedding and event business, then be sure to stick around. Awesome. I'm going to give you guys a few minutes to come on in. Uh, I know there's been a lot of emails that were sent out and I just hopped on a bunch of lives trying to make sure everyone knows that we're doing this this morning. Um, it's also an hour later than our normal scheduled show. So thank you. I'm curious to see if you guys like it an hour later, don't like it. Um, send me your feedback about this. Is it crazy that we do it at 10 a.m. Eastern time? Because I know that's super easy early for you West Coasters. Um, so just, yeah, let me know. Good morning, Erica. Hi, Penny. Thank you for joining us again. Shelby, good morning. How is everyone doing? All right. Um, I also wanted to make sure that you guys know if this is your first time watching our Facebook Live, if you have any questions for Sarah or for myself, go ahead and post them in the comments below. And we, as long as we have enough time, we'll definitely get to those questions and answer them for you all. Sound good? All right. Also, um, this replay will be up on our blog in a, probably a day or two. So it'll be the video replay, my show notes that we use to create this show. So that way you have something to read if you're a reader and also our podcast replay. So if you want to um, listen to this amazing show while you're driving to work, you can do that. Or if you're walking and trying to get your steps in for the day, you can do that. So very cool. Make sure you check out our podcast. Um, and I also thinking about feedback. Do you guys, are you guys, how into podcasts are you guys? Um, I love podcasts. I listen to a lot of different marketing and strategy type of podcasts. I know some of you guys are into this whole kind of mystery murder type of podcast. I see those are very popular. Um, but let me know what you guys think about podcasts just in general in the comments. I'd love to, love to hear your guys' thoughts on that. And then also, of course, this show is brought to you by our Mayish Design Store Flower Workshop Tour. Guys, we have three more dates left um, We with Sean Strong. So super, super excited. I don't know if you guys saw his January video. We just released it, I think, about a week or two ago, and it's doing amazing. Um, so if you don't know who Sean is, be sure you check out that video. Be sure you go over to his Instagram because he's just amazing. We love our 2019 Design Star. Um, and so our workshop tours with Sean Strong are May. Um, we'll be heading to Nashville. August will be in Austin. And then we are going to shoot on over and end everything for the tour in Columbus in November. So check it out. We will post a link for that um, in the comments. Very cool. Uh, I also have, I believe, Desi. She is on my lady behind the scenes helping post all of our um, links and helping me with the comments and questions and things like that. So, hi Desi, thanks for your help, babe. All right, guys. Oh, and last but not least, make sure that you save the date for our next scheduled show, which is February 19th. You know, it's the, it's the Tuesday after Valentine's Day. I know a lot of you guys are gonna be exhausted. So come on in, just wear your jammies, grab that coffee cup, Hopefully, maybe you might have a Mornings with me ish mug and um, just join us for a good long chat because we have amazing questions for the next show. It's going to be amazing and so good. I love it. I feel like I say amazing a lot. Yeah. All right. All right. For all of you guys that are just joining us, welcome, welcome, welcome. I am Yvonne Ashton and welcome to Mornings with Mia's show. Today I have Sarah Campbell here to help us learn about wedding sales and marketing strategies to increase budgets and expand your portfolio. Definitely something I think we can all use and I am bringing on Sarah now. There we go. Hey Sarah, how are you? Good, I'm so excited to be here. I'm excited to have you. It's finally, and we've been, we've known each other for a few years now. And so I don't know why we haven't done this earlier, but this is now I'm glad that we're finally here. I am too. <laughs> and so how are you doing today? Oh, wonderful. I 
you know, we've been doing so much travel this year that, well, last year, that this year, the new year, it feels so nice to be here in Maryland and just having some quieter, calmer time. It's really nice, which is probably why we have time to do this. Yes, you have been one busy lady. And guys, just in case you don't know about our guest, I'm sure I'm hoping a lot of you guys already do, but just in case, you know, Sarah is really known for her wedding business expertise. She's launched several successful wedding businesses in the Annapolis, Maryland region. She loves sharing her knowledge and her passion, helping her fellow designers. Um, and she started a company called Intrigue Teaches, which is really cool. It's just all about sharing that wealth. Um, you can catch her doing lives on Facebook and Instagram all of the time, which I really admire you for that, Sarah. Um, and you also offer workshops and classes. So what I'm trying to say is if you don't know Sarah, then you should. Is that a good intro or what? That's fabulous. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. You it, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you are amazing. And you're truly just inspiring because you know, it does take a lot of guts to just kind of put yourself out there and you're putting yourself out there almost on a daily basis. So um, I just kudos to that. And I just feel like it's something that you just get better and better at. You know, I'm petrified of doing these kinds of things. And I, I do stutter. I was just doing a, a YouTube live just to promote this and I totally botched it. But you know what? It's OK. <laughs> Mistakes happen and you learn and you just move on. Um, so I just. I think for people that want to get into just live video in general, just watching you would be a really great inspiration for them. Oh, especially because I am the queen of mistakes. <laughs> I make mistakes all the time. In fact, we were recording with, uh, we have a professional uh, videographer that records our classes um, for use online. And I kind of made a fumble and a mistake. She's like, oh, I'll edit that out. I'm like, no, you can leave that right there. That's you know, we do make mistakes and to pretend to be perfect is no fun, right? So right. laugh along with me. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, so we're going to hop on into the questions. And I think to get started, why don't you tell us a little bit more about how you started in the wedding business and what it morphed into? Sure, sure. So, uh, so I actually started my career in the wedding industry as a wedding planner, which is something that not everyone really knows. Uh, I, I, you know, I jumped into the wedding planning business because I love parties and social events and I love beautiful things. And there's a whole long story about being thrust from planning into floral, and it definitely was not the ideal way. So it's not the way I encourage people to to dive into flowers. Uh, <laughs> but there came a time where I just like I had to take on flowers. It just had to happen. Uh, and then once I got my hands in flowers, I realized that not only was it such a beautiful medium to play with on a design and an artistic end, um, I also found that there was more revenue that I could build through uh, through flowers. So uh, it was about 10 to 14, I'm always wrong on years, I don't even know how many years, a, long, a lot of years ago, uh, that I went full scale with not just doing wedding planning, but adding floral into my business. Uh, and then, of course, as anyone knows, if you've tried to run a planning firm and a floral firm at the same time, that is a really tough balance to make. So I did have to sell off my planning firm and focus exclusively, exclusively on florals. And that's when my uh, business really started to blossom. Blossom. I love it. I didn't say that on purpose, but it's so fitting. <laughs> <laughs> That's very cool. Um, and so what are your thoughts about luxury weddings? Do you think all designers have the opportunity to do these types of events no matter where they are in the country? What Absolutely. So to really answer that, let me take you back a little bit. So when I first started getting into the wedding world, even before I touched flowers, there came to a point that I realized when I jumped into weddings, I had these big grand dreams of over the top designs and luxury events. Meanwhile, I'm working in like church basements and bingo halls and like I'm folding squeaky metal chairs at the end of parties. That was not my dream at all. Uh, so I tried to find some 
marketing education at that time, this had to be, this was probably 15 plus years ago. Um, right. It was pre Pinterest, pre Instagram, and it might have been pre Facebook. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Uh, so there wasn't those avenues to learn that were so easy. So I went to the library and I checked out books, right? <laughs> A giant stack of every marketing high end advertising book I could find. I remember just loading them in the backseat of my car thinking, I don't even know how I'm going to read through these. And I studied, I studied how big companies, how large businesses marketed, how they attracted luxury clients and how they present a luxury brand. And I started to really create the strategy for myself that I could take what these big businesses were doing and work that into my floral or at that time I was just planning my planning business so that I could get in to the right groups and start connecting with those right weddings that would allow me sorry I forgot to turn that notification off. Jordan, I might need your help. <laughs> uh, so that I would, it would allow me to really create these dream weddings. Uh, and so that really helped me a lot when I morphed into floral design a few years later um, because it gave me a springboard. Now I had already figured out how to locate that high end client and then from locating the high end client, then how to speak to that high end client. Uh, and, you know, when I was doing the Intrigue Across America tour last year, we taught business classes all over the country in almost all 50 states. And consistently, I would hear designers say, oh, Sarah, I love the weddings you do, but we don't have that kind of money in my state. Um, Los Angeles even told me that. <laughs> so, <laughs> no way. <laughs> you know, here's the deal. Some of my biggest clients to date have come from from the have come from some of the smallest markets in the country. There is money to be found everywhere. It's really a matter of streamlining your marketing and your advertising and starting to attract that higher end client. Even more than that, there's different advertising avenues you can take. Facebook is amazing right now. We have, I know this is not a Facebook session, but we have never had a time in our careers where we've been able to say, okay, ad, I only want this ad to be shown to exactly the type of individual I want to sell to. You know, yeah. back in the day, we would take it out of the magazine, right? And then cross our right. fingers. Yeah. But now we have control over that. So um, kind of learning some of those marketing techniques is really what helps to connect with that high-end client in every single market? That was a long answer. <laughs> no, I love it. Love it so much. And I know that you recommend looking at your virtual footprint. Can you explain that a little bit? Sure. That's definitely part of marketing. So uh, a lot of times people will say, well, I don't know if people are looking at Instagram or they're looking at Facebook or they're looking at Pinterest. So I'm just going to put a little bit out there. Uh, but I will tell you, whatever you put out there, even whether it be a little bit or a lot, it needs to create this, what I call the virtual footprint. It needs to create this area that when individuals look at it, they know it's you. They can track mm -hmm. you, they can follow you. If all of your visuals you're using are different on every single platform, it gets a little confusing to the viewer and it's harder for them to follow you. So this footprint should be very clear. Uh, with that, you'll see that I have the same style, the same essence of my designs when I'm sharing on Facebook and Pinterest and on Instagram. Of course, Instagram is my favorite place to hang out. That is my favorite social media source. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> so also with that footprint is you want to continue to keep it active. So with the new algorithms that are always changing, you know, we've done multiple studies just within the flower world for Instagram um, to see what's working and what's not. And as fast as we do a study, things are changing. Uh, so one of the big changes that happened is you started seeing that if you were not sharing regularly, which is like daily, multiple times a day, your feed will start to get less and less and less attraction. Uh, that is because Instagram kind of like puts you in a timeout and says, 
well, you know what, you're not active, like no one cares about you, this is terrible, right? So we're not gonna show everyone what you're doing. But if you're able to maintain that momentum, Facebook will continue to push your message out there. Um, and you can see that firsthand on my feed, like if you go to the Intrigue feed, you will see that if I'm having a downtime or maybe I'm not working as much, uh, you'll see my numbers will really decrease and the exposure will decrease just because I am not as active. Right. And, and being active, it does take, it takes a lot of work, but there's so much great reward on a marketing standpoint that it's worth that time and effort. Yeah, I I obviously completely agree. You know, that's a huge focus for for my team, and I do have a marketing team, so I'm I'm very very lucky. But um, we focus a lot on content, creating really great you know quality content, and just making sure that we're always posting. If we're going to have a social media page, it needs to be active. Um, and so I'm a huge proponent of that and being consistent. So creating content that, you know, is either educational or entertaining, um, just, or just helping awareness, uh, is just so key and important. And while it does take some time, you can create things that then the show is a great example of that. You know, I create this show, which is a very big piece of content, um, but you can then break them down into little mini ones. And so, you know, you might be able to create something really grand and big and then kind of chop it up into smaller pieces that you can kind of use on your Instagram feed or um, smaller, shorter videos that can be more engaging because honestly, um, for everyone to sit here for a whole entire hour is a lot to ask. <laughs> and I get that. <laughs> so... Um, that's, and I just, and also the part that you talked about, um, you know, when, no matter where the user is, they want you, they, you need them to know that it's you. And so branding is huge for us. I mean, um, it, it took a little bit, I feel like for some people in our company to understand mm -hmm. like why using a certain font is so, so important. We don't want any, any other fonts used except for these one or two and, you know, or these colors or it's like little nitty gritty things, but it's very, um, the eye picks up on that. You know, it might not be like so in your face, but even those small details are really important. So that way, you know, just putting together like a quick branding guide, like this is what I want things to look like. And if it doesn't look like that, then you can like go and tweak it. So that way everyone is on the same page with those types of things I think is great. You have done such an incredible job. I think that's why I'm so drawn to you is because I've watched your marketing, even when I'm busy and we're not talking, like I'm still watching and I can see the shifts and I can see the amount of time you put into it. Um, and beyond that, I don't know if anyone else is as aware as I am, you help build this industry like nobody else. Like I, you have supported me from day one and I appreciate that. Um, even when I don't think and maybe you were the only one who knew my name. <laughs> it's been so incredible to have that support and to see the way you support the floral industry as a whole. Like kudos to Mayash and to you for, for being able to do that because, you know, we notice. So thank you. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. I mean, uh, I feel very fortunate to work with Mayash and education is a huge thing for them as well. Um, I'm lucky to have some amazing designers on my team too, because, um, you know, when I when I kind of started in this role, I, I'm not like amazing designer. I've, I feel like I have good taste, but to create something beautiful is something difficult. It needs, it takes skill. Um, so, you know, we've, we've slowly added those people on and, and it makes a huge difference. So um, it definitely takes a village to do what we do. And I'm just really thankful to have an amazing team and a company. And yeah, I love, I love supporting people like that have huge names like you now, Sarah, and, and smaller names, you know, and everyone in between as long as we can, you know, we're one, we're one company, so we can only do so much, but um, just doing things like this is, you know, I love it. So thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right. So what are some other marketing strategies do you suggest to attract the luxury wedding clients, Sarah? All right. Well, this kind of goes back a little bit to your footprint is you want to show off the, the visuals that you want to sell. So 
if you really want to sell like these big intrigue style centerpieces that just drip with flowers like I want to sell every week, <laughs> uh, if that's what you want to do, that's what you need to show off. You know, you need to be showing on your feed the real things that you want to sell. So you cannot complain that, oh my gosh, I never get clients that want this kind of stuff if you're never showing it. Now, that doesn't mean that's the only thing that clients are going to ask for because if you follow my feed, you know I very rarely will show lots of greenery and lots of organic, earthy elements. Not that I don't love them. It's just not the vibe that I share. Uh, mm -hmm. But in 2018, every single one of the weddings that Intrigue did were loaded with greenery. So they were wonderful. They were luxury events. They were beautiful but they were definitely a different look than what it is I show. So mm -hmm. you can be showing what you're, what you want to sell. And, but keep in mind that it's really a vibe. It's an energy that you're giving with these images. So it does not mean that that person is going to buy that exact thing, but it's going to allow you by showing those luxury high end elements. It's going to allow you to attract that right client. Mm -hmm. um, I've also had a, uh, a number of people say, well, I don't want to show too much luxury high-end images because then my clients will think they can't afford me. Well, I got news for you. Um, pretty much everyone will think they can't afford you anyway when you're showing pretty things. Um, so don't even worry about that. And it is good to filter off. So if even though I believe everyone thinks they can't afford a, a wedding florist when they're seeing the images on social, uh, there is that weeding out that some people just aren't going to call because they really are only going to spend 400 600 maybe a thousand dollars on wedding flowers and we all know to create these high-end looks you do need more than that so don't right. be too stressed about people not calling you because you're showing high-end you will get more calls when you're showing those beautiful well-polished images uh, and if you don't have those images in your portfolio get yourself to a workshop to a class that's going to allow you to use those images. You know, I've seen some amazing yeah. images coming out of the Mayash Star workshops over the years. In fact, I was just looking at your schedule and I think I need to come to Nashville with you. That'd be <laughs> awesome. Come so on. Natalie, our creative director, is in Nashville as well. I'm like, oh, field trip, we'll go visit. Wow. <laughs> There's some really some beautiful, beautiful images and being able to build your portfolio is so important. And Honestly, on an investment side, it's usually more beneficial to attend a workshop where you have hundreds or even thousands of flowers that you can play with and photograph and interact with um, as opposed to trying to buy those all and figure out how to do it at home. Yeah. Yeah. And, and just to talk about the workshops, I know you guys do it the same way, but we bring the best of the best to our workshops and um, we have an amazing photographer that we work with and um, you get a whole, whole portfolio of your work. You'll get a, whatever like large installation is done. And I love that idea of being all, instead of like doing a kind of, you know, styled type of shoot where you're, you know, investing a lot in that and it's just for the pictures really, um, investing in the education to do that. I think that's a wonderful tip. I didn't even really think about that, you know? You know, I, I first noticed it when um, we were on this tour last year and I started seeing people that were, were signing up for not one or two, but three tour stops, four. I think one person came to like five different tour stops. Wow. Yeah. And I, I had to ask after the third time this designer came, I said, well, what, what are those bringing you back? Because I am teaching the same things in every single state, which is a different color palette. And she said to me, she's like, Sarah, she said, it makes more sense for me to come here multiple times. You're going to show me how to do it and make it look right. You have the photographers on hand yeah. and I'm building my portfolio. She was a third year florist. I believe that, um, she just didn't have the portfolio she wanted yet and this helped her to build her portfolio and i thought that's genius why didn't i think of that when i was building yeah it is genius it's amazing and we do say like oh you get these to add to your portfolio but i don't i didn't ever think back to be like yeah this is how you can build your business too i right? just add some pretty pictures yeah very cool um what else what else do you have anything else you wanted to talk about marketing strategy wise uh, all right, so some of the easiest things to do when it comes to marketing is first, just figure out what the visual is you want to share. And 
pull those images together. If you don't have images, like I said, get out to a workshop to, to build that portfolio. But start just pulling your images, reaching out to those photographers to get images, reaching out to your brides to get images. If you absolutely have zero in your portfolio, um, just pick up some flowers, make some things, and start photographing them. And then I have one simple tip that is going to change everybody's world right now. Are you ready? I'm ready. So video right now is stronger than photo is when it comes to social media. So Mark Zuckerberg in his big world of everything Facebook, Instagram marketing, um, he is deemed, I don't know if he personally deemed or his team deemed, but he is deemed that the videos will be shown more than the photos. So even on my own feed, I could put a beautiful photo out there that would get a thousand likes or 2000 likes and I get zero following and very little interaction. On that same avenue, I put a time-lapse video on. If you don't know what time-lapse, it's like that speedy video, right? Mm -hmm. I put a time-lapse video on and I can see growth of 100, 200, 500 followers from a good time-lapse video. So here's what's going to change everyone's life. I want everyone to set up their phone. You can do it today in your design studio. Oh, it's Monday. We may not have flowers. All right. So I from, come from the wedding world. In the wedding world, we – no, it's Tuesday. <laughs> I don't even know what day of the week is. But in the wedding world, we don't have flowers every week. For those of you that have flowers, I want you to take out your cell phone. There is a time lapse or a hyper lapse option on both iPhones and on Droid. And – I want you, maybe for the next week, just record quick time lapses of you doing your work as you're doing it. So you're going to be designing anyway. Yep. Make a video and start putting those out on your feed and seeing how they're working. And if for any reason you don't see it working or you don't understand, I invite you to personally send me a DM. You can ask me and I will answer you. If for any reason I don't answer within 24 hours, it's because I got a lot of DMs. Feel free to send me another one to make sure I didn't miss it. Um, but I am happy to help anyone to, to figure out that, that rhythm on the videos. It has been so powerful. And I don't have any, like, virtual content I can share. I don't have any lessons on this that I can share with everyone. So um, I give you myself. Feel free to ask me whatever you want to ask, and I will answer for the time-lapse videos. Yeah, I love it. Um, video is so huge and I, I, you are an inspiration. Like when I was looking through your feeds and things, I was like, I, I feel like we got to step up our video game. Like I need more videos, more videos. <laughs> yeah, yeah we, video is huge. And I, I've been talking about video for a while. I think it's so important. It is a little nerve wracking, I think, for the designers who, you know, might want not want to get in front of a camera and talk. But I like the time lapse idea because you don't really have to be talking. You can just put a cool song on it. And there you go. So and if, if you don't want to show your face in the beginning, it's OK. I recommend you show your face. But if you don't want to, just cut it down. Yeah. So, Yvonne, I just had this random memory. This is totally off script. But do you know what the first video I ever made was? The first floral video I ever made. I bet you can guess. Oh, I have the worst memory in the world. I, <laughs> especially so, when I'm on live video. <laughs> all right. So the reason I say I bet you can guess is because the first floral video I ever made was for an audition I did for the oh. Mayesh Design Star years ago. Isn't that so I, funny? That is crazy crazy so that's kind of what tapped me into the whole world of video I was like oh that was fun let's do it again and again yeah. and again and and then here I am <laughs> I love it right full circle that's so um, cool. if anyone's wondering no I did not win <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh, and it's hard it's so hard picking designers you don't even know and then the different things that we go through yeah it's it's a little crazy but I am grateful for that bit of inspiration because it launched me into something I didn't even know I was going to be good at. So thank yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome, man. You are. You're very good at it. So I we have a lot of questions, I think. I've been sure. trying to kind of keep up a little bit and still pay attention to what you're saying. But we had one that got sent in early um, from Instagram. It's Floral Designs Maui. And they said... <laughs> 
They would love to watch live, but 6 a.m. is a little too early for us Hawaiian folks. I'm worth um, it. <laughs> yeah, so they're going to watch the replay. Um, and by the way, I saw someone asking about a replay and if it's in the email or anything other than Facebook. And yes, let me answer that question really quick. We The replay will always be on Facebook. We also upload it to YouTube. You just need to give me a little bit of time. Um, and then I turn it into a podcast. And then you'll be able to find all of that on our website. Um, it may shall come on the blog. And if you are subscribed to our email um, uh, notifications, you'll get an email of our blog post once it goes live. If you aren't subscribed to our blog, you know, you just in our email database, that's okay too. It'll be included in our newsletter. But I try not to bombard everyone with a bazillion emails, but it will be up everywhere and we will post about it on social media. So I hope that answers that question. So sorry, I need to go back to a question from Flow Designs Maui. So there one question is, um, how do we begin to evolve our company into a different design category? In other words, say we're known for doing a particular style, but we would also like to move towards the bes bespoke gardeny style that is growing in floristry. What are some ways that we can begin to promote that to our clients and coordinators that we work with? Oh, I love this question. And I have the answer. First is just start a rebrand for yourself. Look at everything. Look at your logo. Look at your fonts. Look at your website. Does that speak to that bespoke audience that you want to talk to? And if the answer is no, you have some work to do. And I'm betting because you're asking this question that the answer is no. So... Right. What you're gonna do is you're going to create a look that you know is going to, or I don't, do we ever know that you believe and you feel strongly that you would be attracted to if you were looking for this bespoke gardeny designer. And then you wanna look at all of your ad spaces, uh, even your free ad spaces, whether it be wedding wire or not, my wedding, perfect wedding guy, there's so many of them out there. And you want to make sure the imagery that you are sharing, that's part of your, your social footprint, is on those ads, right? You want to make sure those images are all connected to that bespoke garden essence that you want to attract. So everywhere that individuals are looking, they're going to see this. But then there's one step further that you're going to need to take because you would have already built your brand where you are that is something different than what you want to build it into. So you need to do some networking. I'm talking old school, pounding the pavement, going and visit, make some arrangements, you know, make sure you photograph them and get your social media first and then bring them to these venues, bring them to the bridal shops. These ones you already have these great relationships with and say, you know, we're starting to promote this new direction, these new designs, get them excited about what you are doing that is new. I love it. Perfect answer. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Penny wanted to point out your turning a rose into a peony video. She says, wow. Oh, thanks, Penny. So <laughs> that is so, I, I did not make that up. Someone taught me that. And I wish I could tell you who taught me it was, I've been doing this for years and years and years um, and I originally started doing it because you know now it's pretty easy to get a garden rose that looks like a peony um, but I don't feel like we had as many options 10 years ago so 10 years ago I was learning all kinds of ways to MacGyver flowers like it's funny I say MacGyver now but I realize I like, my audience doesn't know who that is um, <laughs> I get so, it. <laughs> you know, you don't know MacGyver likes makes these cool things out of things that aren't things. Um, yeah. and I'll it at the end, but that's not flowery. So I will deconstruct and reconstruct flowers. And I feel like I've gotten to the point where I can make almost anything. You know, there's that one that everyone does is making the uh, anemone out of the Lysianthus. There is, um, Gosh, I can't even think of anything beyond that, but there's so many different flowers that if you can't get them, you can create them or give those essence by pulling other elements of flowers together. And as a wedding designer, I never tell my clients no. The answer is always yes. You want peony off season? The answer is always yes. You want anatomy off season? The answer is always yes. Now, I'm pretty good at finding them growing somewhere in the world, even if I have to buy a plane ticket to get that bunch of flowers on the plane and have it shipped. Um, but if I can't, or if 
maybe customs takes that bunch of flowers. Then right. in those cases, I'm going to have to um, MacGyver something, right? I'm going to have to figure out a way. So uh, that video is the first time I've shared it in probably a couple of years, but there's a time-lapse video. I can even give it to you if you want to share it. Um, yeah, to of course. There's a time-lapse video that just shows you, okay, I have this rose. I think we used a Sahara rose, and it just turned it into what looked like a peony. I love it. Yeah, very, very cool. I And that reminds me, we did like a – a blog post. I I don't even know if it's still up on our blog because it's old, but it, we called it frenemy because the enemies and the you know anemones and enemy and the friend <laughs> and everyone loves it. So we called it frenemy. But it was a flower hack on how to turn. I, I don't know if it was like a Lizzie or some other kind of flower into and in using like a ringium and making it look at, like an anemone, right. white anemone with a black center. So um, yeah, I love those kinds of things. That's very fun. Now, anemones, I feel like this year have changed. I don't know what's happening with the farms or the shipping, but where I used to struggle so much with anemone, I don't know if you've noticed that, anemone this year have been stunning, like great quality, opening beautifully, better than I've ever seen them before. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't see too many people asking a ton of questions about them. That's the only way that I can gauge it. Cause unlike you, I don't touch live flowers too often, but yeah, 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 yeah. I, I can see that. That's very cool. Good to know. It's amazing how products evolve and change over time. All right. So I have Terry Hall here and she wants to know the name of Sarah's business, but you have businesses. Okay, so <laughs> you want to explain so, that? <laughs> just remember the word intrigue. Whenever intrigue is attached to flowers, it's probably me. Uh, so we started with intrigue designs. Uh, um, then we grew into intrigue teachers, where we started sharing, educating, doing classes, um, and that led us to the intrigue experience conference, which is definitely the biggest and most elaborate of any of the events that we produce. Um, so those are really the three main things was intrigue designs, intrigue teaches and intrigue experience, but cool. not to be saying there aren't other intrigue things floating around that I'm also attached to. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, that's what do 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 do. Okay. Here, here's a good one. I think, uh, Lori wants to know, do you use Veronica? I love the beautiful blue purple colors. I do use Veronica. In fact, when we were on the tour this year, I believe we were in Kansas City. Um, and I'll have to, maybe I'll post on my story. Yeah, I'll post on my Instagram stories today. I had this big bunch of Veronica that I have never seen Veronica like this. It was, it was thicker than usual. It was long. It was so healthy and so beautiful. Um, uh, yes, I do use Veronica. And my favorite palette to play with is actually the blue tones but i very rarely do the blue tones because i find blues don't play as well in marketing as my peaches and my pinks and my ivories and my creams and my corals yes i agree with you honestly because even when we post pictures i could post tons of peach and corally and blush colored anything and there everyone's going to be like drooling over it and going <laughs> insane and then you post a really cool something or another that's a, any other color including blue and it's like wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> really? we say the same thing <laughs> yeah wah, wah. <laughs> it's so funny to me it's so true though all right here is, oh, here's, you'll like this one. Anne says, love your tips. By the way, Sarah, your hair looks great. Thanks. You know, it's straight today. I usually curl it. Like, um, I think I might like the straight look. I don't know. <laughs> Thank Thanks, you. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then I have Renee here and she says, how does one get an awesome photographer to take pictures of one's high-end floral design without it costing an astronomical fee. How many, any tips there? Okay. So first it's totally okay to pay your photographers. Um, if they want flowers from us, we're going to pay them, right? Or we're going to want them to pay us rather if we're going to design for them. So don't stress about investing in your photographers. 
Uh, I do say that when you can do some trade, that's definitely helpful. I know um, personally, I do a lot of work with style shoots across America, which uh, this year I'm not doing quite as much, not because we're fighting. I just want everyone to know I love Heather at Style Shoots Across America, um, just because I'm not traveling as much this year. So um, there are some amazing opportunities to get involved with Style Shoots Across America. Uh, and uh, Heather, who runs that, that movement, she actually pulls right out of the Intrigue Teaches Facebook group, and she'll announce when she's got opportunities right in that group. The great thing about that is when you design for these these shoots that are done through style shoots across America, I said that too many times, but when you design for these, <laughs> uh, there are 10 photographers, 15 photographers, sometimes 20 photographers all capturing your images, uh, which means you have all those different eyes and all those eyes are different artists right so they're seeing your images differently so that's definitely a great way is getting involved with these shoots that have multiple photographers uh, when it comes to getting images of your actual wedding work this is a long answer get it on so stop me if you need to no no it's a complicated question it has a lot of different variables so i like it keep on going we got time awesome, awesome. so when you want to get images from photographers of your live wedding work which i know a lot of us do you really need to start building that relationship before the wedding. So um, don't just shoot an email off that day and be like, hey, Bob Bryant Photography, I, I'm going to need images of my work, okay? Because that sounds aggressive and like you're telling me what you want, like you didn't pay me. It just feels weird. But if instead you start, as soon as you figure out who the photographer is, and I ask my bride who the photographer is, as soon as you have that name, that information, Start building that relationship. Reach out to them and, you know, hey, Bob, Brian, I'm really excited. We're going to be working on Yvonne's wedding on June 6th. And uh, I am excited to see the way you photograph my flowers. Uh, and then if you're doing something interesting, maybe you're doing an installation or maybe you're doing a beautiful, like, intrigue-style bouquet, uh, tell them about that. You know, oh, the bouquet is going to be just – really unique and different for this bride you know it's going to absolutely photograph beautifully start that conversation start talking to them so that they know you're excited about their work um and the same thing on social so here's a little tip that i actually don't share very often um i guess i'm about to share this so so i have a piece of paper this is not the paper but i have this piece of paper and i will write a list of all the individuals I want to interact with each week. So when I have weddings come up, I make sure that every week leading up to that wedding, I'm interacting on their social media. It means I'm liking, commenting their pictures. I am becoming part of their social circle, right? So that when it comes time for the wedding, they're excited to share those images with me. Now, if you're thinking that's a lot of work to get some free images, you're right, it is. The other option is pay the fee and get your images for the cost and honestly sometimes i don't have time and it's just worth it to me to pay the fee um i don't feel like most photographers charge an astronomical fee most of them do charge a pretty pretty standard fee they may want a couple hundred dollars and that's it um the other thing you can do is um you can bring a photographer on staff with you you know here at intrigue we have clear sky images who just happens to also be my daughter. Uh, so we had her go and take classes and learn how to photograph. And then it took her about six months to a year to really start photographing flowers the way we wanted to see them. Uh, but that was really helpful because now I'm able to travel with a photographer that can shoot images that are right away ready for me to share on social and share in my portfolio. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> that that all cool. sounds amazing. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I think building those relationships with the photographers is super key and also not have the expectation that you're always going to get them free and think of it not as an expense, but as an investment in your future Absolutely. events that you want to be attracting. So um, now that we have our photography from all of our different workshops and things, it's like literally changed our lives. It's one of the reasons why you're able to like, have branded everything and, and have a cohesive look. And um, that is, it's been key. So I can't even say how much um, it's changed our lives having all of those photographs. It's very, very, very important. All right. 
I, have, I, I feel like there's a lot of questions. I haven't scrolled all the way through, so we're, we're, we're working yeah. our way. All right. I'm all <laughs> okay. Lily Floral says, all my bride, oh, here, let me bring it up. Here we go. All my brides want Kefiole Dahlias for summer wedding. How can you keep them fresh? Sorry, I was distracted looking at like the pictures pop up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that again. Isn't that fun? Okay. Fun. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Lily Floral says, all my brides want Kefiole Dahlias for summer weddings. How can we keep them fresh? Okay. So I'm now talking with a wholesaler and I want to make sure I answer this well. I'm going to give you my honest answer and I may get in trouble. Here's the thing, guys. I can't keep them fresh. I can't keep them alive. I look at Cafe Olay and they're beautiful for about four hours and then they decide they do not want to be designed by me. So um, I don't have a great answer for you. Cafe Olay is my one struggle. The only time I've been able to get them to work well for me, I felt like it was pure luck. So um, Yvonne, do you have a better answer for that? Because <laughs> This is when I wish I had Dave and Shelly on the show with me because this is their expertise. What I can tell you is that we have a flower care guide. I'm bringing it up just to double check on what is in here. Um, I'll share the link for it, of course. And uh, I do have I do have a dahlia section on here. So let me just oh, wow. share that real quick. I have a bunch of windows open now. Just give me a second. So that way I don't end the broadcast by accident like I've done before. Um, so if you go to info.mayish.com and then it's flower-care-guide. So go to there, it's the little form that you fill out and then you can download our guide. Um, and let me just bring that back up so I can read to you what it says. So I do know enough from doing the shows with Dave and Shelley that like the taking care of your flowers and processing them properly is key and huge to pretty much everything. So in our flower guide, it says using a hydrating solution intended for bulb flowers from your favorite brand, whatever that is, is yeah. very, very important. Um, make sure that you pre-cool your floral solution and flowers to the same temperature. Make sure that you remove all foliage from under the water line. And then cut your stems at an angle with a sharp, clean knife. And then it says cut the dahlia stems, bleed proteins, amino acids, sugars, and minerals, which are a breeding ground for bacteria. I don't really know what that means. Cut dahlia stems that bleed <laughs> yeah. Does that make sense okay. to anyone? Not a like flower person. I don't know. I'll so have to have, ask David Shelley. I have an idea that this is kind of something on the phone, but when it is dahlia season again, why don't we work together, Yvonne, and I can do some fun videos about how to keep these alive and I will figure it out myself as we are doing this because honestly, this is an area that I need some more education in too because I can keep any flower alive for long periods of time except for those cafe au lait that I love so much. Yeah. They also said here in um at the hydrating solution needs to be changed more often with this flower as well to prolong the vase life. So, if you guys aren't using hydrating solution, which I have a feeling a lot of a wedding and event people do not, do you, Sarah? I do. I okay. I have several regimens and I have my favorite brands I like and I cross yeah. brands and I definitely use solutions for everything but I don't change it regularly. So that could be part of it. And yeah, I also so it needs to be, anything. yeah, yeah. It needs to be changed often. And then to store the dahlias, you should be storing them at 40 to 44 degrees. So that is the other piece of it. Can't be too cold and it can't be hot. Well, and that also is the challenge I run into because I'm a CoolBot user um, and mm -hmm. the CoolBots, you, they'll say that they hover around 40, 45 ish, but they really don't. They're more in like the 50, 55 range. So that could also be part right. of it. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, yep. Yep. So I'll, we'll put the link in the comments as well so that way you guys can check it out. And of course I'll include it in um our show notes and that way you guys will have it there as well but it goes over a lot of the different problem flowers that we hear about on our show uh, pretty much every month so we talk about anemones and clematis callas dahlias and gardenias gloriosa lilies because those are some finicky flowers sometimes um hellebores 
And literally every single month, I get at least a couple questions about hydrangea. It's crazy to me. We talk about hydrangea constantly. Um, Lily of the Valley, peonies, phalaenopsis, roses, and stephanotis. So those are all in this amazing guide. And then, of course, there's like kind of a general care and tips for handling. Awesome. So, well, yeah, I'm glad check you it out. asked me a question I had no idea how to answer. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, it's okay. I mean, I there are some troublesome flowers out there. And so I, I just feel like the theme to everyone's answers, like Dave and Shelley's, is all about the care and handling at the beginning, using the right types of solutions, you know, different flowers need different types of solutions, and just kind of knowing those and how they're supposed to be handled. Again, it's a whole other learning process that, again, I'm not, I'm not very familiar with either myself, but it's all good. We're all here learning together. <laughs> um, all right, next question is from Chrisana. She says, how can I get the blue apron on your site, Sarah? The blue offer doesn't seem like the same pattern you are wearing, and I want that bright blue. <laughs> yeah. um, blue Love it. The blue is the very first to go. It is no longer available. However, I do happen to have the blue apron that was used in those promo photos. So if you would like it, send me a message and I will make sure you get that particular one and I will even sign it for you. Oh, I love it. But there's only one. So if anyone else wants it, you're out of luck. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Thanks, Sarah. And thank you, Chrisana. Um, all right. Next question is from... Uh, Cecilia, she says, do you have a recommendation for a tripod to hold your phone when you record videos? Yes. Can I step off camera for a minute and get it? Is yeah, yeah. Okay? And I have mine too that I love that I want to show everyone too. Awesome. I'll be back in a hot yeah. second. It's right here. Okay. Yeah. Well, Sarah is grabbing hers. Um, I do. So when I, when I did the quick Instagram today, I did not use anything because literally I was on for 30 seconds. Um, but I have this really cool one that clips onto my desk and then it has a USB that can plug into my computer and it has a little round light that will sit behind the phone. So it holds the phone, it has a little light and it makes everything really, um, bright. There's also some other cool like smaller tripods that you can just hold and that really it helps just having your phone on anything. I have one that like kind of looks like a gun almost that you can kind of clip the phone to as well. Um, so if you need to walk around it makes everything more smooth. Um, Sarah do you have your tripod? I no, know um, we were filming on Friday and oh. it's set up on filming. So I don't have it. I forgot. It's not with me. Do you want to um, describe what kind it is? And I'm going to go grab mine real quick. Just, yeah. Hold so on. It's right behind me. Is, um, I believe it's called a gorilla. I have to double check that. But it is a tripod that has these little bendy like octopus arms that you can bend around. I bend it around tree limbs. I bend it around lamp posts so that you can attach it pretty much anywhere. And for me personally, I like that angle that shoots down because I look skinnier. So I like to angle mine up higher and allow it to shoot down. I also use it when I'm doing selfies or when I'm doing um, like those big bunch pictures that I take. Um, if you guys saw the ones I did the farm last week, they were insane. I will actually attach that, that tripod with these little bendy arms to anything I can attach it to so that it's just in close enough area that I can reach around with one arm and hit the button as I'm holding my big bunches. So, yeah, uh, I that's can, very cool. I can share a link with you, um, and they're not expensive. I think they're like $14. I can share a link with you exactly what I use. Yeah, it's very cool. And so here is the one, because I do work in an office setting. I'm not like walking around. So here's the light that I was telling you about. And then it has a clip as well, and it bends kind of like what Sarah is talking about. And then it clips. I'm trying to get it right in front of it. And then it clips to the desk. So I clip it down on my desk. I have the little light and then the phone. And then I have to adjust my chair, basically. And then there's a USB that um, just plugs into the computer and the light works. So it's pretty cool if you're going to use it in an office setting or like in, in your shop or things like that. But definitely what Sarah's talking about seems like more versatile if you're like walking around or want to use it at events and things like that. Yeah, yours is way different than mine. Um, I will say that mine is also super, super hardy because, like, I've dropped it in a bucket and taken it out. <laughs> and 
I would attach it to like sunflowers and yeah. It's, yeah. It's definitely like yours is definitely more for an office. The one I have is definitely more for like wherever you are in the world. <laughs> Yeah, no, but I like those ones that have like the bendy arms. And so I remember being at one of my first conferences and I saw like a, a dude with his phone attached to like this tripod and he had it bent. So it was like over his shoulders and then he was just like walking around with it. So yeah, you can use it all different ways and they're just so versatile. And I do recommend using some sort of tripod whatever you're doing, whether it's taking pictures and videos, it just really helps um, up your quality and make it look more professional, honestly. Yeah, there's also, there is another unit that I, I've tried using, but I need it to be less complicated, uh, but it creates a really beautiful video. Uh, it makes very smooth video. It's called a smooth cue. Um, the smooth cue, it's like this apparatus you attach your phone to, and it gives you those really smooth, like, like cinematic, movements. Um, it is wonderful. I never use it though, because it's like an extra step and clearly I need it to be super simple. Yeah. 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 I've always wanted to get one of those too. I just haven't yet. Well, so. I will send you mine. It's been used three times. It's all yours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. And speaking of, so I've mentioned a few times that my, my daughter plays soccer and they, I really want to get this one camera. I'm trying to think of what it's called, but you can clip something to you and then you set up the video camera and as you're moving, which would be cool if like you're going to maybe like speed it up and do like a time lapse type of thing if at an event, it will literally follow you. So it like you clip on this little clip thingy and then Whoa. the camera just follows you around without you having to move it, um, which is really, that. really cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. So one day. Look at All that. Right. Nerds are techies. <laughs> I know. I am a nerd. <laughs> I am too, so we get along. <laughs> yeah. Big, big nerd. Um, well, I'll try and take a couple more questions and then we'll, we're going to have to wrap it up because it's almost noon. I cannot believe it. Um, Roxanne says, is the Rose to Peony video an example of a time lapse? Yes. Uh, sort of. That was that was an actual video. It's an actual video that you can download on our Tree Teachers site that we just sped up. So it was a professional grade video that we just sped up. But but yes, it is an example of time lapse. Um, if you go back a few, um, I don't know how how far back, but you'll see where it's more basic. The lighting's not perfect, and I'm just creating a design really really fast. And in fact, I can share, I'll share a, a basic time lapse, a really easy time lapse today on my feed. So you can see an updated version of what that is. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask on my feed. Very cool. Um, I have a question from John Campbell. Might be in relation to Sarah Campbell. I'm not I, sure. I love all the Campbells. <laughs> Hi, John. <laughs> Um, it says, hi, Sarah, what was the moment that made you finally switch from planning to floral designing? As a planner who is quickly gaining a passion for florals, this is something I've been weighing lately. I'd love your insight. Okay, so what made the switch? Um, the story is actually long and might need its own, its own session just to tell that actual story. Um, it's also a very good story over a glass of wine or two. <laughs> Uh, but really it came down to uh, knowing that, uh, yes, I could do wedding planning, but the reality was I didn't care if the bride made the church on time, if they had any food at the hall, I just wanted to look beautiful. And when I realized that not only did I have the ability that I could create these beautiful things, but also that's where my priorities lie. You will always be more successful when you follow what is in your heart, when you follow your priorities. So because I always cared how beautiful everything was in creating that environment, that's something that you really can control as a florist and as an event designer. That isn't something you have as much control over as a planner. Um, a planner, some planners do design as well, but for the most part, most of the successful planners I see, they are primarily more on the logistics and the visual inspiration side and not physically creating. Uh, so I also found that for me, I sold better when I was selling design than when I was selling planning. So the post just selling like a service and what I had, now I was selling a, <laughs> music. Now I was selling a physical creation. I'm selling 
um, something tangible. And I found that the money was significantly better when I jumped into florals and specifically into those large scale wedding florals than it was when I was doing solely planning. Um, and I, I say it over and over again, I'm a business person, a businesswoman first, a business individual first, whatever you want to call it. And I am a florist second because you first have to make sure you are running a sustainable, powerful business in order to do what you love. So look at the dollars. And I feel like sometimes in our industry, it's not popular to say that. It's not popular to say, you know, I'm designing because I want to make a profit. But at the end of the day, why are we working so hard if not to build a profit? If we are a hobbyist, that's totally fine. You could be a hobbyist, but that's not my game. I'm I'm in the floral business to build a life and build an income and revenue for my family. And yeah. there's far more revenue in flowers than there was in planning for me. Love it. Cheers to that. We are coming to the end. And so before everyone leaves, I thought we should talk about intrigued experience a little bit and in, in your special that you have for everyone. Hopefully you all hung in there for this. <laughs> um, so our intrigued experience conference, and, and in fact, earlier when I was talking to Yvonne privately, I said, you know, I really feel like it was this conference that actually put me on the map when we first started hosting, I think it was four years ago when we first started hosting this conference. And the reason I, launched the Intrigue Experience Conference was because I personally have this hunger for floral education and I want to learn from everyone. And I found that I couldn't learn from everyone and still run my business at the same time. So I thought, wouldn't it be amazing if we brought everyone together? Mm -hmm. So the first conference, I looked at three distinct design styles. I looked at the foraged and airy gardening style. I looked at the more modern, or what I call is that modern AIFD, very clean line, streamlined style. And then, of course, the ballroom style, which is where I feel like I fit very well. And I pull designer, designers from these three distinct areas, and it really created this diverse gathering of floral, florists and planners and designers all coming together. Not only that, I wanted an event that I could create that was curated around every corner. So I found that I went to, when I went to a conference or an event with wedding planners, everything was beautiful and every piece was in its place and you always knew what you were supposed to do. And then I would go to a floral workshop because I really wanted to learn florals, but flowers can be chaotic and florists generally aren't planners at the same time. So sometimes there's a lot of chaos when it comes to workshops. And I wanted to create this event that was bigger than myself and brought everyone together in both floral hands-on workshops and curated style design and photography. So that's what launched Intrigued Experience. Um, and we just launched uh, our 2019 Intrigued Experience a couple weeks ago, and it sold out in seven days, which isn't that amazing? Like, I was so nervous. It's amazing. Last year I was on tour all year. Normally we launch this conference a year out. I really didn't have the time to put into the launch until January once the tour ended. So we launched the conference two and a half, three months out, and I was shocked at the response that we received. But I have something. I actually saved two of the seats. So, I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> um, I saved two of the seats just for us today, just for you and your customers at Mayash. So only for your customers, and we're not talking about this anywhere else, I have two seats. Uh, they're available to the first two individuals. The site will very much still say sold out. I'm not changing the site. You enter code Mayash, uh, and you will be able to have access to those seats. Not only that, you have access to it at the pre-sale rate. So um, you, it is, I believe, $1,000 below what is on the right now. So we only have two of those. Uh, so the first two of you to get to the Intrigued Experience site and put your order in using that code Mayesh will have those two seats. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sarah. You're welcome. It's kind of exciting. I can't wait to see who the two people are. <laughs> I know. If you guys are the two people, make sure you let us know because we, we want to maybe follow you guys around. I want to hear about everything. You guys can be our insiders, our Mayish insiders. 
Yvonne right now, she's like, wait a minute, I'm getting that seat before anyone else. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, hold on real quick. <laughs> Awesome. Well, Sarah, this has been amazing. I have a whole bunch of other questions. So I'm hope I think we'll be able to work together and get those answered and I can add them to the blog, I'm sure. Um, so if you all, yeah, I, I know you're amazing like that. So if you guys give me just uh, us a little bit of time, we'll we'll get those up on the on the blog show notes as well for you all. Um, anyone that's also sent in questions that we didn't have time to get to. So Sarah, you've been an amazing guest. Thank you so much for sharing everything, all your tips and marketing strategies. It was great. And as always, I love seeing your smiley face. So thank you so much. Thank you. Bye, guys. All right. Have a great day. Bye, Sarah. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. That was awesome. Sarah is amazing. So much passion, so much joy in what she does, right? You can just feel it from her. Um, and that's one, probably one of the most things that I love about her. And, and so that's a wrap. Wrap on February 5th, Mornings with Mayish. Uh, I hope to see you guys. If you guys have more questions for Sarah, go ahead and put those in the comments now. Um, I, in a couple of hours, I'm going to go through those and get those off to her and her team so that way we can answer them for you and add them to our show notes on the blog post for this show. Uh, that'll be up in a day or two. Let's give us a little bit of time. Our next show, as I mentioned in the beginning, is scheduled for February 19th after Valentine's Day. Uh, so on behalf of our Mayish family, we wish you a very successful Valentine's Day. Uh, we hope that it is full of love and full of successful business. Thank you for joining us, and I will see you soon. Have a rocking day. Bye, guys.